mean bread and butterfly? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, hmm? Hey guys, it's Kayla from KJ and Her Books and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be doing another edition of Cards Against Books for my March TBR. I will also be doing my Femathon TBR as well incorporated into this too, so yay! Femathon is a readathon that was created by Faye from Books and Chocoholic. I will leave the link down below to the video that I made where I announced it and I gave you recommendations. I will also leave a link down below to her channel. I'll be co-hosting this with a bunch of other amazing people and I'm super excited for it. I had hoped to film this video a little earlier. I did intend to film this last week, but it did not happen that way because I got sick and I was absolutely tired from work because it was just a really, really long week last week and it just didn't go to plan. So I'm filming it today before I go out with some friends. So trying to get in the filming when I can really. So basically, I'll be doing my Cards Against Books TBR game. If you don't know what that is, I will leave a link to the playlist down below so you can check it out. It is essentially just the card game that I have created to help me pick my TBR for each month. You've probably seen a lot of TBR games all over the place, but they are so much fun. And honestly, I love the fact that I can have a prompt to help me pick what books to read in the next month. It just makes things a little bit easier as well. And it's exciting. <laughs> so these are my Cards Against Books cards. I don't know if you can see that. I absolutely love these ones. I ordered them off a website and got to make my own prompts and everything on there. So I've already done the drawing of the cards as I normally do. And what I'm going to do with the Femathon TBR. So I've gone through and I've worked out which books will match up with which prompts in my Femathon TBR. So I'm pretty much going to go through the Cards Against Books and then I'll go through my Femathon TBR and that way it might be a little bit less confusing. But I've sort of worked it out so that I can fit the books that I drew with my cards, I can fit them in with the prompts for Femathon. So we'll do Femathon after we do the Cards Against Books. But anyway, stop this rambling, let's just get into it. So that first prompt was a romance that was a TBR vet. That's pretty much a book that has been on my TBR for quite some time. So for this one, I'm going with Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. I have wanted to read Sense and Sensibility for so long because I absolutely love Pride and Prejudice and I just haven't read any of the other ones. I don't know why, I'm just hopeless. <laughs> but I really wanted to read this one and I think this one is perfect because it's the graphic novel version of Sense and Sensibility, which is perfect because it's short and it'll be quick, I hope. <laughs> and it's it's Jane Austen. I, I know I'm just gonna love it. So all I know about Sense of Sensibility is it follows two sisters who don't have parents and they're trying to make their way in the world. And of course there is romance. And I know that Alan Rickman was in the movie adaptation, so. But I thought this would be perfect for the month of March. Gonna start it off with some Jane Austen. This next prompt is a historical fiction that is under 400 pages. I was really glad that I was able to come up with one that was under 400 pages and that was Walking by Kim Kelly. You've probably seen this on my TBR last year because I was going to read it. I can't remember what month it was. It was like July or August or something like that. But I had planned on reading this at some point and I just did not get around to it. I wasn't in the mood. But lately I have been in the mood to pick up a historical fiction and something Australian and this is going to be... Perfect. Sydney, 1948. Brilliant German surgeon Hugo Winter is dead and his protege Lucy Brin is tasked with sorting his papers. Among them, Lucy finds glimpses of Hugo's past that paint a disturbing picture of war and prejudice, a portrait of Australia she can barely recognise. That same week, an intriguing patient comes into her care on the orthopaedic ward at Sydney Hospital, one Mr Jim Cleary. 
Lucy's experience as an army physiotherapist, as well as her own very personal knowledge of pain, tell her there's more to this man's fractured leg than meets the eye. As she pieces together who Jim Cleary really is and the truth behind his injury, she not only falls for his laconic charm, but discovers the rival surgeon who relentlessly persecuted Hugo, a man who will shatter Jim's life completely now unless Lucy can stop him. Inspired by a true story of medical genius and betrayal, Walking is a crisply told tale of bigotry and obsession, love and devastation, one that charts the path of a young woman finding her feet in the world and the transformative power of kindness that drives her own ambition. This sounds good. It's set in 1948. It's set in Australia. I'm looking forward to it. And hopefully I can read it this time. <laughs> So this next prompt is a free pick that is on a color wheel. So basically what I do with the color wheel prompt is I will go onto Google, find a color wheel, and I just get it to randomly pick a color, and then I pick a book for that color. So I have no idea what book to pick for this one. This is going to be interesting. So we're literally going to be doing it right now, and I really hope I get a book that's meant to be on my Femathon TBR. <laughs> Okay, so let's give this a try. We've got... Looks like lime. So lime. Lime. I wonder if I have that color. Um, do I have lime anywhere? Let me just have a look and see if I have a lime colored book. I do, and it's a short one too. I'm going to go with Tashi by um, Anna Feinberg, Barbara Feinberg, and Kim Campbell. And yes, the lime color matches pretty much like in the middle there so I'm gonna go with that because lime is a very difficult color on my shelf to find. If you follow me on Instagram I actually found this book in the park on Valentine's Day. It was part of a look for books that's here in my town and it's basically just people leave books behind for others to pick up and either take home, um, put back or swap with like another one. Um, so I found this one and I've swapped it with another book that I still have to drop off in the park but haven't done so yet. But I found this one and it's super short. It's one that I wanted to read when I was a kid. So we're definitely going to give it a go. <laughs> well, it was like this. Come and I'll tell you about the time I tricked the last dragon of all. So says the daring hero Tashi in his first book of adventures. Tashi comes from a place far away. He escaped from a warlord and flew to this country on the back of a swan. He's as brave as he's clever and he tells the very best stories. That sounds so cute. And I think it'll be a perfect quick read as well to get through in the month of March. fantasy that is a pretty cover. So for this one I'm going with The Guinevere Deception by Kirsten White. I'm actually going to be buddy reading this with Kayla from The Reading Cloud on YouTube and I'm looking forward to this. This has been on my TBR since I got it in the fairy loot box last year I think it was and I have just wanted to read it and I just have not gotten the chance to do so. I am super excited to read it. Princess Guinevere has come to Camelot to wed a stranger, the charismatic King Arthur. With magic clawing at the kingdom's borders, the great wizard Merlin conjured a solution, sending Guinevere to be Arthur's wife and his protector from those who want to see the young king's idyllic city fall. The catch, Guinevere's real name and her true identity is a secret. She is a changeling, a girl who has given up everything to protect Camelot. To keep Arthur safe, Guinevere must navigate a court in which the old, including Arthur's own family, demand that things continue as they have been, and the new, those drawn by the dream of Camelot, fight for a better way to live. And always, in the green hearts of forests and the black depths of lakes, magic lies in wait to reclaim the land. Arthur's knights believe they are strong enough to face any threat, but Guinevere knows it will take more than swords to keep Camelot free. Deadly jousts, duplicitous knights, and forbidden romances are nothing compared to the greatest threat of all, the girl with the long knotted black hair riding on horseback through the dark woods towards Arthur. Because when your whole existence is a lie, how can you trust even yourself? And I know that this is meant to be a trilogy as well, which is quite exciting, but I am looking forward to reading this because I love King Arthur. And 
the next one is another fantasy, but this one is a seasonal read. So this is going to be a book that would be perfect to read for that season. So in this case, March is the beginning of autumn for us. So this is a book that is a fantasy that would be perfect to read in autumn. So for this one, I'm going with Children of Blood and Bone by Tommy Adeyemi. I've heard so many good things about this and I just want to read it because it sounds fantastic. And I know nothing else about this. Like even the blurb on the back just says, they killed my mother, they took our magic, they tried to bury us, now we rise. I think this is gonna be perfect for March, perfect for the start of autumn. I don't know much about this, but I'm excited to read it. Okay, so now we get into Femathon TBR. Like I said, most of these books will coincide with some prompts. I've also doubled up on some prompts as well because I work full time and I have a lot of other things going on in my life that it's gonna be a little bit difficult for me to read every single prompt, but I'm gonna try and read as many as I possibly can. So that's why I'm doubling up on some prompts. So the first prompt is to read a classic. So if you've seen my recommendations video, you probably know the prompts already, but this will just be a refresher to be able to see what ones I'm picking for each prompt. The first prompt is to read a classic. So this doesn't, like I said, doesn't have to be a classic. It can be a retelling of a classic, anything like that. But for this one, I'm going for a retelling of a classic which you might gather is going to be the Guinevere Deception. So I'm going to add that for this prompt. It's a retelling of King Arthur and King Arthur Legends. So that's going to be good. And like I said, I'm buddy reading it. It's, it's going to be a perfect read for Femathon. The next prompt is a fem positive book. So I'm actually going to double up and use this for both of those prompts. So read a classic and fem positive. So fem positive is just a book that's fem positive. Like it's, it's, pretty straightforward. <laughs> the next prompt is a by a person of colour, so I'm going to use Children of Blood and Bone for this one because Tomi Adeyemi is a person of colour and I just think it's going to be great. I, I have nothing else to say about this, I'm just really looking forward to it. The next prompt is a platonic femme relationship, so this can be like mother and daughter, sisters, best friends, that sort of thing. For this one, I'm going to go with Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. A graphic novel is perfect. It's a perfect addition to read for Femathon. And it's about two sisters, so it's definitely going to be about a platonic female relationship. Very excited to read this one. We're going to start the month off with reading a Jane Austen book, which is going to be perfect. But yes, this is a platonic femme relationship about sisters. The next prompt is a wild card, so this one you can literally pick anything you want as long as it's by a female author or has a female main character. So I'm going to double up and use Sense and Sensibility for this one. The next one is LGBTQIA+, so this one just has to have any of the LGBTQIA plus components in it. So for this one, I'm going with Wayward Son by Rainbow Rowell. I loved the first book, which was Carry On. I'm very excited to read this because I love these main characters. And if you don't know anything about this, you'd have to sort of read Fangirl first because in Fangirl, basically our main character, she writes fan fiction about these characters that are in movies, which is kind of like a copy of Harry Potter, but very different. And this is the second book in that, which I'm assuming is like a duology. So I'm looking forward to reading that because it's it's pretty interesting. So it's all about Simon Snow and his adventures and he's gay. So that makes it all the more interesting for me. The next prompt is disability or neurodiversity. So for this one, I'm actually going with Walking by Kim Kelly. I'm going to add this to that prompt because um, from what I remember, the main character actually had problems with her legs when she was younger and that's why she became a physiotherapist. So I thought that would sort of fit in perfectly and I know there's a lot of talk about the the, the surgeon as well at the very beginning. Like he's a, he was a very renowned surgeon or something like that. So I thought that might be perfect to use for a disability prompt. I'm hoping, if not, I'll probably have to change it, but I think this will work fine, so I'm going to go with that one. The next prompt is non-fiction, so this is a non-fiction book that's all about females, and for this one, I'm going with Audrey Hepburn, Portraits of an Icon. Now, this kind of looks thick, and I was uh, I was contemplating not doing it, but um, it's pretty much just, it goes through, like, her movies and her pictures and everything in the movies and, like, information about said pictures. So I thought this would be fantastic because Audrey Hepburn is one of my idols. I absolutely adore her. I think it would be perfect because then I can also incorporate her movies and watch some of her movies as well in the month of March. But I definitely want to read this because I've had this for a while and I just haven't read it. But I really want to and I've flicked through and some of the pictures are just absolutely gorgeous. So I'm looking forward to having a look into this one and seeing what it's all about. I mean, look at that picture. 
Wasn't she just gorgeous? She was so pretty. And the last prompt is Femmes Fight Back. So for this one, I'm going to double up and use Children of Blood and Bone because let's face it, they, they fight. They're going to fight for revenge or people who killed their mother or something like that. That's what I can assume. So I think that'll be perfect for this prompt. Well, there you go, guys. That is my March TBR and my Femathon TBR. Again, using Cards Against Books. I am super, super keen to do this readathon. I think it's going to be so much fun and I'm going to be co-hosting it with some amazing, amazing people. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be fantastic. Okay, that was bad, but you know, you know. <laughs> so thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!